off right now, right now. Like when you have someone who's a regular podcast guest and you see them getting too big for their britches and becoming a pain in the ass, you fire them right there and say, we're not going a day further. I mean, couldn't they even change it by one word? There's something about her or is that too close? I guess no, because when you trademark, you can come after something very close. I agree with you. But, you know, to me, I think if they are moving forward to open it, they've probably struck a deal with Penny behind the scenes. Everyone seems to allude to the fact that Penny and the husband are geniuses. They've been in the biz a long time. They know West Hollywood. They know all the players, meaning the city council members that help get these permits and things moved along. So, you know, they, they say on the show, well, Penny's not our partner, but I mean, they, I would think if they're moving forward with this and they know the merch opportunities, they've had to have struck a deal with her. I, I don't know. I, I, it always, it never fails to amaze me. People in business, I, I, you think people in business are so smart and they're so stupid. And I see it at all levels. And I see it here in California, even more with people who are billionaires and they get lucky in one aspect of their business. Not lucky. I mean, they're, they're good, but they, are literally dumb in so many others. So I don't know. I, it is a very weird scenario. If they open on May 22nd. To me, they must have figured out something on the back end or they're just never going to do the merch. They're never going to give Penny that cut. I don't know. And by the way, if you, like you say, are going by all means, please go. Cause we would love to hear you, us, you talk about yes, it. Yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. 110%. I really want to go. I want to see their sandwiches look good. And I, okay. I don't dislike them. I mean, I don't, I'm not like the biggest stands for Ariana and Katie, but I don't think they give a fuck and I don't either. So I would say go, um, by the way, going back to Bethany for a minute, I'd like to hear Jason Hoppy's podcast. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Game Could you over. imagine? Could you? Yeah, imagine? no, I wanted to. No, I I know what it would be about because I've already figured out Bethany. But y'all are like the this Bethany stands are so ride or die, and I I get it. I used to be obsessed with her. She and Carolyn, uh, or Carol Rad as well, were my favorites. Carol is such a class act in a way that is really? like. Oh my god, she's like a Kennedy. It's she's such a class act. The interview you did with her, the three parter, was legendary. Legend. I love how Carol said before we got on the air, how long is this going to take? I really don't want to talk about housewives. And we were on for three hours, three hours. It was so good. Everybody needs to go back and listen to them. Um, Those I... are your favorites right now. If you ask me who I'm feeling, I would say Rena. Oh, she's and, a queen. And I mean, everyone's going to hate me for I this. Agree. I would a... feel Rena and EJ. That's who I'm feeling these days. Another legend. Like if I wasn't going to overthink it and just let's, those are the ones, Rena and EJ. That's where I'm dropping the mic. Those I are my love, two. I used to love Bethany, but we go through this. I think we we are toying with playing desperate, not desperate or something on our live show. But it, it just, it's, I just think Bethany is just so, it's, it's so desperate. But anyhow, but Jason, I would love to hear that. Yeah, and by the way, I, I want to apologize because there is a third person that should be added to that. Camille Donatachi Grammar. I mean, those are my three. All Beverly Hills. Rinna, EJ, and Camille. Right now, those are the three that I mean, I guess would be my favorites at the moment. Ugh, Camille looks so good in real life. Saw her at Katsuya about a year ago in, Be- in Brentwood. Unbelievable. Oh my God, the skin. The, the, oh, she looks gorgeous. Every bit the star. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean, isn't that who we want to hear from yes. about the divorce, Jason? I, I do. Please speak. I mean, oh, why is the why are there NDAs in the world, people? I mean, and by the way, Jason. Yeah. I mean, that is the thing for all you criticize about Jason. And I'm not like, I'm not really an anti Bethany. I think I might like Bethany more than you. Yeah, I like her, but. Think about Jason. If he had a podcast, because everyone wants to make a dollar, it would make a shitload of money. It, it could be called, I don't even know, like divorcing Bethany. It could be called a divorce, my story, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, I think Jason's podcast would be, if it wasn't bitter and he just calmly recounted facts, like she was just doing, I think this would be a number one podcast for a really long look. Rachel Levis is trying to get out and it's 
people are still listening. So I mean, that oh, Jason, Jason is the smartest. He has played this brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I have to imagine Bethany's Achilles heel is Jason Hoppy because Jason for a decade has been so quiet. He shows up to those court appearances. He never, you don't, and you know, it drives her, you know, she's poking the bear so much. She would love for him, right? Because she want, if he opens his mouth, then she has ammo of what an awful human being he was and the worst and look at him now and how bitter he is and see, I told you guys and now I'm right. And I think he, whatever, you know, he probably makes a couple hundred grand a year. He's very comfortable. I don't even know if he has a relationship with his daughter, but maybe he did. I highly doubt it because I'm sure that well is so poisoned, but maybe he's with somebody now and has a happy life and he just knows how to ultimately get to her. And it's clearly working. And let me tell you, I mean, I told this story years ago on this podcast. I mean, I was at Barnes and Noble at a book signing. I don't know who's book signing. And there was this vision near the bathroom and it was Jason and he was with a young girl and it was Bryn and Bryn had to go to the bathroom and daddy walked her to the bathroom and said, go to the bathroom and I will wait for you out here. And while Bryn was in the bathroom, I was like, it took every ounce of my moral fiber to not ask Jason Hobby for a picture I wanted to ask Mr. Hoppy for a picture so bad. And I really am not like shy or or shy away from things, but I just got a vibe from him. He kind of clocked me like, okay, here's a gay guy. It's New York City. This is like right after, this is in the middle of the divorce, but right after. And I think he just clocked me of like, okay, this gay guy has recognized me. He obviously knows who I am. And I mean, what are you going to, a picture for what? Like, I want a picture because you were on Housewives and Bethany getting married and Bethany ever after. Yeah. And you want nothing to do with this life or this woman. And yet I want a picture with you. I know your life is like hell at the moment and you want nothing to be associated with Bravo or these TV shows, but I still want a picture with you. I got a vibe from this gentleman <laughs> that- it wasn't going to go down well if I slowly approached and asked for a picture. Now, I don't think he would have punched me, but I think he would have just been like, get the fuck out of here. I just got a vibe of like Jason does not want to be approached. He seems like a man with boundaries, which is what she hates because it's not playing out in the court of public opinion. But do you believe our friend Dumois? Dumois. Do, 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 do. What did she say? Dumois. Posted a item. That says that that Bethany dumped her fiance Paul several months ago, the mm. skinny on her engagement. Real Housewives of New York City alum Bethany Frankel might be hanging up the 